Okay, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to this um, um, fourth uh, proposed session. Uh, and in this session, I'll uh, explain um, uh, about. I'll, I'll explain to you about. Uh, I'll explain our uh, internal releases in BIMs and um, uh, BIM BIM loads um, uh, in BIMs. Okay. So uh, one of the most confusing things about uh, to students is, um, is is how to release you know a particular part of the beam uh, of a frame in in, in Procon. Uh, I'll share my whiteboard now just to explain what I mean. Okay, so if you look at this frame here, this is an example of a frame. Um, you've got you know uh, a frame that I've got a pin support and a pin support. Uh, or let's call this node number one and this node number two. Um, so basically, and let's call that node number three. So basically, we've got a pin support in node number one and node number two. Um, uh, and also, you've got a release, you know, uh, node number three. Because now this release means there's no transfer of moment. This is a pin. You know, this is a pin in uh, at node number three, which means that there's no transfer of moments at that particular point. So therefore, the moment at that point is zero. Uh, uh, so basically, uh, the rest of the beam uh, has got you know fixed end connections between the two between the you know respective members. So basically, if you have a moment at that point, since there's a fixity, and then you also have a moment at that point. You know, since there's the, the point, it's fixed. Okay, so the, this moment transfer basically. You know, so now my the aim of this class is to show you how to you know how to specify a uh, pin, a pin, a pin, a release. You know. In this case of this nature in Procon, and also I also want to explain how to 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 have you know let's call this ten kilometers. Uh, sometimes people don't know how to enter these you know beam loads beam loads of this nature because remember this ten kilometers is a beam load. It's not it's not it's not a, a nodal load. Okay, uh, I'll show you how to do that in Procon as well. Um, okay. So if I go, uh, so if, uh, the, the other thing I want to emphasize is that uh, the pin, you know, these releases, the pin release here should not be confused with, with the pin support. Okay, this is just a support. And uh, with, the, with the pin support, uh, there's resistance in, uh, of, uh, in motion in the vertical and horizontal direction. Okay, that's um, the pin support. So this is, is, is a pin uh, specifying uh, internal releases uh, and therefore no transfer moment. Okay, so if I go to my Procon, if I stop sharing this and go to Procon and share my Procon screen, okay, well, now this is. Okay, there you go. Okay, so done this already for you. So um, let's assume I've got my, you know, my frame, my little frame, um, with nodes one, two, three, and um, those are my beam elements. So basically, if I want to specify a node that, I mean, a pin at node number two, I'll, I'll, I'll use, I'll make use of these, you know, releases, first node and release second node. Okay, so I'll say, okay, node number two, the release at the second node, which is node number two for this beam one, two, second node is is, is two. So basically, I'll release, uh, I'll specify a P for a pin. Okay. Uh, for node number two, and I'll do the same for beam two to three. I specify a P, okay? To specify that yeah, it's it's the, you know to specify the release at node number node number two, okay? So therefore, you want to analyze this trust this frame. Uh, I'll have zero moments at node number two. Okay, remember, normally we in, in most of these classes we leave this blank, okay? So when you leave that blank, Procon assumes that you know this point is fixed. You know these two beam, these two beams are fixed. Um, uh, therefore, there's moment transfer in, in, in this in this frame at that particular point. So you have the bending moment there, you know. So that's what normally Procon assumes. Um, and uh, note not that there's also other options. You know, you can have torsional rigidity. Um, torsional rigidity means you uh, uh, at this particular point, uh, and that what normally torsional rigidity is is um is it can only be applied in, in three dimension in space frames and things like that. Uh, it means that um, you got you you release the x and y, you release this uh, beam end connections. I mean, this beam ends at, at in, the x, in the x and y direction, and then um, uh, you fix the z direction. Means which means that uh, you, can, you don't have you know twisting, you know, which is torsional rigidity. 
you can do that by specifying the t at that point, or you can do that by also specifying uh, a release in the x and y. Okay, um, but that you will learn as you go along in your, in your career at, at work. Um, you can also specify a release in a particular direction, just x, just y, or x, y, z, and things like that. But those you learn in, as you go along. Um, in this class, I'll probably just say you release, you know, at that particular node, you, know, you say you just release the pin, you just put a pin and a pin, um, and then number two, and then, because most of the problems that people know in these elaborated classes is a uh, uh, problem like that, where you've got a, a pin, you know, a pin, I normally specified with a ball like I showed you on that first diagram, um, and, and, you know, and, and requiring zero moment at that particular point. So those are the common problems you have. Um, the other thing I wanted to explain is um, uh, beam loads, a bit about beam loads. Um, a lot of people don't know how to enter beam loads that are not UDLs. Okay, so because I've discussed, you know, how to enter UDLs. If I want to enter a UDL um, in the Y direction for beam one, two, two, three, I'll just say beam two, two, three, and then I'll specify the Y direction. And then I'll specify a UDL. I'll say if it's facing downwards, I'll just say minus ten. Okay, this should be minus ten as well, so that I have a uniformly distributed load, not a triangular load. Um, so you see that's vertical, you know, vertical, vertical load. Okay, um, from 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 two to three. Uh, if I want that load perpendicular, I'll specify L. And it will be perpendicular to the beam. Not there's a difference there. You know, if I want it vertical, it will be Y. But if I want it perpendicular to the beam, it will be Y. So I can also have a beam load that is a point load. Okay, this five kilo inch on here, uh, from one to two, uh, and at a distance of one meter from from one, is is a beam load. Okay, uh, it's a beam load because it's going to cause bending. Okay, uh, a nodal load is is a node is a load on a node. Okay, uh, beam. Uh, this five kilometer is a beam load as well uh, because it causes bending, like I say. And uh, if I want to make it perpendicular, I can also specify L. And then you have that, okay? Uh, but if there was a node here, then that would be a node alone. So since there's no node, and I'm just specifying the distance from the lower node, uh, so therefore that becomes a beam load. In fact, that if you had a simply supported beam, that would cause, you know, the V shape bending moment diagram for those who remember these things. Okay, so basically that's what I wanted to explain in this session. I just wanted to explain to you how to, you know, uh, specify an internal release in a beam and, um, and how to enter beam loads, you know, that are not uh, UDLs. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, that's the end of this video and um, see you um, for the next video.